take notes in your journal to do that, okay? So, here's the passage from Scripture. Um, today, we're looking at a specific topic. It's all over the place. There's no way I could pick all of those verses and read them as our focal point. So, I'm just going to read this passage once again from chapter 1 that points to God and our relationship with Him and what it's all about. Wisdom starts with a relationship with Jesus. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, the king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction. To understand words of insight. To receive instruction in wise dealing. In righteousness, justice, and equity. To give prudence to the simple. Knowledge and discretion to the youth. That the wise hear and increase in learning. And the one who understands obtain guidance. To understand a proverb and a saying. The words of the wise and their riddles. And here's what it's all about. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So that is our passage for today. Um, we want to do a little demonstration. We want to do a little activity here very quickly, uh, which hopefully will help prove a point that I think is going to be important for us. Um, for this, I would like an adult to volunteer. Oh, wow. Well, that's, that is debatable. It's controversial, but that's okay. You put your hand up, so coming up here, Carnell. All right, this is fantastic. Can y'all give Carnell a hand? Because she has no idea what she's in for. And you never know with me. Um, and this is going to be fairly simple, I, I hope, okay? Um, Carnell, will you do your best imitation of a cat? Pretty good? All right, do your best imitation of um, a human being eating dinner. An adult human being? Or <laughs> Take your pick. Okay, so you went with the adult. Okay. <laughs> that actually looked like there were utensils involved. I don't know why. Just <laughs> um, all right, that was imitation. Give her a hand. Was that good? Could you have figured out what she was doing there? So far with her imitation of a cat, could you have guessed that was a cat? Imitation of a person eating, got it? Okay, now um, give me an imitation of the animal that is called the eye eye. Nope. Let's try again. Nope. They actually really don't make much noise, but. Oh, that was better. Quiet. But show me um, how an eye eye would go to bed. Okay, it's kind of how a human would go to bed, but that's good. Um, show me how an eye eye would e find food, would eat. Okay, so they're eating leaves or berries. Okay, all right. Can you give Carnell a hand? All right, because that takes guts. Now, do you have any idea what an eye eye is? Absolutely not. Um, uh, unfortunately, you know what? Let me show you. I, 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 yeah, um, this is Oh, a, my. <laughs> yeah, we're going to pass this around. So take my phone, pass it around. This is an I, I. Yeah, there you go. That is a good imitation of an I, I. Um, it is an ugly little creature. Anyone know what an I, I is? No. Are you going to find me a picture and put it on the big screen? You, yeah. Awesome. A, Y, E. A-Y-E. The reason it was called an I-I is because when people saw it, they went, I-I. Seriously. Seriously. And so they called it an I-I. You can go have a seat. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to get an I-I up on the screen so you don't have to pass my phone around. But, Carnell, how easy was it to do an impression of a cat? Yeah. Okay. Do you have a cat? No. Have you ever been around a cat? Yeah. Yeah, you've seen cats, you know. How about a human being eating? But you see it every day, right? Yeah, but I mean, you, it was, you know, you know, we can, we can figure that out. Um, was it easy to do an imitation of an I-I? Why? I didn't know what it was. How easy is it to imitate something you don't know what it is? It's pretty much impossible. You can't imitate 
what you don't know. We've been going through this book of Proverbs, and Proverbs seems like a bunch of what? Rules. Seems like a bunch of rules. Proverbs, these wise sayings that are basically rules. Do this, don't do this. Do this, don't do this. Stay here, don't go there. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do this, that's okay. It's rules. It's, it's guidelines. Did we get that? I, I. Okay. Um, it's a nocturnal creature that lives in Madagascar. It's actually related to the lemur family. And um, the way that they eat is... Oh, that, one's that one's way too cute. Get the ugly one. <laughs> I know because their, their um, front two teeth, they actually continue to grow. So they're very kind of ultimately will become buck tooth because they're teeth grow continually and they sharpen continually and they don't crawl around to eat um, they actually have these big long nasty looking fingers they have an opposable thumb yeah like we have uh, anyway it's it's really a kind of crazy creature but it's hard to imitate when you don't know what they are and um, they eat grub worms so they would they use these claws and they get behind the bark with these long fingers and pull out the grub and chomp down. So, uh, no, he's too cute too. But you start to see his little, his little buck teeth coming out there. Um, hard to imitate what you don't know what it is. We've been doing the book of Proverbs. Seems like a bunch of rules. But actually, today, as we are about to celebrate Christmas and the gift of Jesus Christ, who is God, I thought, you know what we need to talk about? We need to talk about what do we learn about God in the book of Proverbs? What can we learn about God? What do we learn about his attributes? What do we learn about his nature? What do we learn about who he is? Um, if my phone gets around to Chris, uh, he might be able to find that picture that I have. Uh, you could email it to yourself, actually, Chris, from my phone, and then you would have it, um, because it's really ugly. And I would like for everyone to see how ugly it is. Uh, yeah, on a nice big screen, that would be great. Um, so, who is God, and what can we learn about him in the book of Proverbs? Okay, that was, that was, yeah, but it's still not the one. It's not the one. The one. So, when we look at the book of Proverbs, we can learn a lot about God and his nature, his characteristics, his attributes who he is, what he is like. And that's going to be important, right? Because if we're going to have wisdom and knowledge and we're going to seek to be imitators of God, what do we have to know? We got to know what God's like. To be able to be an imitator of God, you have to know what you're trying to imitate. So what can we learn about God? We're going to learn some stuff from the book of Proverbs. Now, here's what we're not going to go over that he's gracious. I think chapter 11 verse 19 sums that up. But we're not going to go over that one. That he is a just God. He gives punishment where it's due. He blesses as well. That's chapter 11 verse 21. Those two kind of go together. We're not going to talk about those. That he is truthful and he's honest. And that he seeks that from us. We find that in chapter 12 verse 22. We're not going to go there either. I'm going to just look at these three things we're going to talk about them very quickly. Three characteristics that we learn about the nature, the attributes, the character of God from the book of Proverbs. Number one, he, oh wow, that, he's like a chameleon. I don't know that he really has purple and green and a little pink and fuchsia. Um, but those are the color of his eyes. He's a nocturnal creature. You see his fingers? Doesn't he look like uh, something out of Lord of the Rings? Or a gremlin. Yeah, where do you think they got that idea from? Yeah, um, from that little ugly dude. So anyway, but he is almost extinct, and so he is an endangered species in Madagascar. So he's kind of cute when you know that about him. Big pointy ears and crazy. So, all right, let's leave the eye, eye behind, and let's go to God. Uh, we're going to put this first verse up, chapter 15, verse 9. Um, the characteristic, the attribute that we learn about God is that he is loving. You might go, whoa, so how do we learn that about this from this verse? Um, but let's see. 
chapter 15, 9. All of them are already in there. So, Levi, we're going to put up verse number one. Okay. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord, but he loves him who pursues righteousness. Um, we can learn from the book of Proverbs that God is gracious, loving, merciful, that he cares about us. I knew my parents cared about me when they set rules that guarded and protected me. I didn't like them, but I knew they cared about me when they set rules that guarded and protected me. God sets rules and boundaries that are to guard and protect us and to keep us on the right path, which is a way that we can know that we're loved. He loves us those who pursue righteousness. Now, the only reason we pursue righteousness is because the one who is what? Righteous pursued us. So we not only learn from this passage that God is loving, he loves those who pursue righteousness. We also learn that he's righteous. He's not gonna love people who are righteous if he's wicked. He's not gonna consider the wicked an abomination, um, the things that they do if he's righteous he's righteous and so he does consider the things that the wicked do the way of the wicked as an abomination to the lord but the one who loves him the one who pursues righteousness the one who has been declared righteous by god those he loves and so you can walk away from here today knowing that you are what righteous and loved by God. We're declared righteous and we're loved. And it's part of the nature and the character and the attributes of God. I also think we learned something interesting about um, love here because look very carefully at the wording. And I love the way the ESV actually did this. What is an abomination to the Lord? Are the wicked an abomination to the Lord? Does he detest them? Does he detest what they do? Does he detest their way? Because he is a loving God. Even those that aren't following him, even those that have walked away, even those in Proverbs that are declared to be fools because they have no knowledge of God or they have neglected or said you don't exist. God says, I still love them. Their way is an abomination to me, but I love them. And so you've probably heard the whole love the sinner, hate the sin kind of a thing. Um, God loves everybody, but he loves his, his people in a special way. And he offers love to everyone. And so the way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. I went through every single passage in Proverbs that uses the word wicked. And it depends on what translation, NIV, ESV, etc. But I looked at every single one of them and never does it say that the wicked are an abomination to the Lord. I think that says something huge about the nature and the character of God. Because God is a loving God. That's something we learn about his nature. Not just for us who pursue righteousness because we've been declared righteous. But even for those who don't pursue him at all, whose way is an abomination to him, he still wants them to come to him and to be saved. Let's look at the next one. The next one, uh, the character that we're going to learn, or the attribute, is knowledge. He is knowledgeable. Um, but I love this passage. Sheol, do you know what Sheol is a reference to? It's going to be the afterlife. And in the afterlife, it's the Netherlands. It's the hell, basically, of the afterlife. It's separation from God in the afterlife. Sheol was actually a place where stuff was burned. So it was fiery and, and horrible. It was a location. So it was called Sheol to describe hell. So Sheol and Abaddon lie open before the Lord. How much more the hearts of the children of man. Um, basically, what this is saying is... God knows everything that takes place even in complete separation from him in the depths of hell. God knows everything that takes place. You can't hide anything from God. He has ultimate knowledge, all the knowledge in the world. And so, do we think we can keep a secret from him? 
good luck. <laughs> good luck. If he knows what happens in the depths of hell, he knows everything that's hidden in our hearts. He knows everything. He has all the knowledge in the world. The, the term that we use for that is omniscient. And so I think it's really cool in the book of Proverbs where there's all these rules and regulations, we learn that God has all of the knowledge. He's the one that gives us wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and instruction because he knows everything there is to know. That's part of the nature and attributes and character of God. The final one is gonna be his power, his strength. And I love this. Uh, we have two passages here. Proverbs 21, 1. Um, who was the strongest person uh, in Old Testament history? The, the ultimate powerful person ruler. Give me a, um, not a name, a title. Okay, in Egypt, the king. The king. Do you say something bad about the king? No, you better not, because what's going to happen to you? Yep, you're gone. Okay? You don't cross the king. You don't say anything bad about the king. You don't do anything bad about the king, because the king has everything. All of you are the king's what? Subjects. Not even people. Subjects. Yeah, you're like anonymous. You don't have any value except maybe the taxes that you pay to support his kingship. Um, so the king was the ultimate power and leader in Old Testament history in that day and age. The Pharaoh was essentially the king of Egypt, okay? And so the king, here's what God says through the book of Proverbs. The king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord. He turns it wherever he will. How much power does that king actually have? None. Can you oppose God? Good try. Kind of like trying to hide a secret from him. Um, let's look at the next verse. Also in chapter 21, verse 30. No wisdom, no understanding, no counsel can avail against the Lord. What is strong enough to take him down, in other words? Nothing. Because he has all the power there is. We see from the book of Proverbs something about the nature and the character of God. I think that's important for us because if we're going to learn wisdom and if we're going to seek to be imitators of God, we've got to know this God that we're seeking to imitate. And we've got to know this God that we're following and that we love and that we celebrate at this time of Christmas. I think it's so cool how things tie into Christmas even though they don't seem to. That song we just sang, it's not a Christmas song. Come to the altar. Would you think that's a Christmas song? But I heard hints of Christmas all over the place. Oh, what a Savior. A Savior. For you shall call his name Jesus because he will do what for his people? Save his people. He came to be our Savior. And then um, bow down before him. The shepherds did that. The wise men did that. They came and they worshiped Jesus, acknowledging there was something about him. They understood his nature, his character, that he was God. And they bowed down because there was something special about this child, this baby at Christmas. And so as we celebrate Christmas, this gift of God, what I want to encourage us to do is to think about the nature and the character of God. What are we really celebrating? this Christmas how are we going to celebrate it are we going to be imitators of God or are we just going to sing some songs and open some presents and make some cookies and decorate a tree and wear a really ugly Christmas sweater to a special party okay I got to do that Friday night it was great fun um, it was a little tight a little small but that enhanced the whole yes yeah it was, it was great um, Christmas isn't about all that stuff Christmas is about the birth of Jesus, the birth of a Savior. And we want to know him personally, intimately. That's why he came, so that we could have a relationship with him. And then our desire is to be imitators of God as dearly loved children of his. And so if he's loving, let's be loving. If he had knowledge, 
We can't have all knowledge, but let's seek wisdom. And the Proverbs tells us how to do that. He was powerful. Let's be powerful in the right way, not abusing our power and privilege, but combining it with mercy or justice the way God does according to his nature, his character, and his attributes. Let's see how this plays out into our lives, but let's simply know that that's what we're celebrating Christmas, this incredible gift of God. We see that God is gracious and generous and a giving God at Christmas because he gave us Jesus. We see that as loving, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whosoever believes in him would not perish, but have eternal life. We see that he's knowledgeable because Jesus understood and knew everything even though he subjected himself to humanity and his humanity he grew and learned as a child he was still God and then finally his power um, we see this baby draw people to him in a way that no baby has ever done before no baby will ever do after and then we see this baby go to the cross one day and offer his life for us and and buy and earn salvation on our behalf. What a beautiful thing. That's what we celebrate at Christmas. And that's what we're going to celebrate this coming week. So as you look at all of Scripture, whenever you're reading, even the Old Testament, always see what we can learn about God. Because he's going to reveal something about his nature, his character, or his attributes. And today I hope we've seen that in the book of Proverbs.